What is going on YouTubers, gamers and hobbyists and we're here! It's the final episode of P and Q episode 240 and we are certainly going out with a bang uh, thanks to you guys and your awesome awesome questions I, I don't know where to begin I literally have the choice of picking and choosing on this uh, episode but I'm gonna go for I'm gonna answer every single question because that's the nature of this series I answer questions if you ask it I will do my best to answer I'm not saying I'll be able to give an answer every for everyone like a satisfactory answer my answer could simply be I don't know but here we go <laughs> I don't have any emails for the final episode at least I, I checked this morning there was no questions in any emails I might have had for the series I haven't seen any posed on other people's videos so it's literally the questions from or the comments from last episode and my reminder video so thank you for that this is the final episode um, but we will see maybe in a few years time might do or I don't know might do the old Christmas special here and there, you know. Don't know about this year, but you know, I never say never, and it's it's not it's not the end, it's the beginning, you know. Enough of this jibber jabber. Let's get on. I've got loads of questions here. Um I'm doing this final episode at my painting desk because that is where I feel most comfortable. I know it's not the greatest of backgrounds, I could have done green screen that but you know what? It's the last episode, and I've just, I just I thought I want to be comfortable when I answer people's questions on this one because they they might require a bit more thought. Um, and I've even got myself a cup of tea, British breakfast tea, builder's tea we call it. And here goes. Now, from the top, then, Mr. Stephen Green is first. Hello Stephen, how are you doing? And he says, sad to see the series go, but I can see where you're coming from. It's had a good run. What projects are you most excited about in your life right now? Well, that's the first kind of question. I agree with you, it's had a good run. Projects I'm most excited about in my life right now, hobby projects, are my Lord of the Rings solo campaign, which even at this stage, I don't know whether it's going to be eligible in terms of you know quality for video I'm certainly going to do my best to try and bring that to you though and I'm and I'm working hard on preparation for that are there any new series we can expect in the near future well hopefully that hopefully the solo Lord of the Rings or Middle Earth um, adventures I'm hoping that's what we can be do you think gaming areas in the hobby stores or the wargaming tournament scene will ever be what it once was? If it is, it won't be for a long time. Um, but yeah, I think it's got a 50-50 chance. How do you think not having public places to meet and play will affect the hobby as a whole? Well, it's, it's had an impact, hasn't it? Um, but I think people have adapted well to it and technology has certainly allowed us to you know step outside the box and do things and from different angles you know things like um like you know your apps like roll 20 and zoom um and things like that it just enables and uh, live streaming is a big thing now it, it it's 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 enabled us to adapt i think i think we've done quite well it has had an effect, but I think we've we've coped. Have you ever considered writing a campaign for something like Zombicide and playing it out on the channel? Yes, I have. I have, certainly. I've given it a lot of thought many times in the past. And it could be a thing in the future, whether I play the classical Zombicide or the, um, the, the sci-fi version, or both. <laughs> Would you consider showcasing your favourite models, kind of like an armies on parade in dioramas on display boards, etc.? Yes, I would. I would do that. It's something I would like to do in the future, 
uh, my armies, and I did one, here's a good chance, it's a note to myself, right Pete, here's a good point to put a, uh, a link, I did a video on my uh, Tyranid army at the time, and yes, um, it's been expanded on since then, you might see the link in one of the corners, but I intend to do similar things in the future. I would like to anyway, so all of my armies. Oh, and by the way, this episode will be slightly longer than usual, but you'll see what I'm on about later. Um, where are we? Bum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Yep, keep up the good work, my friend. Thank you very much, Mr. Stephen Green. Thank you, sir. That was a good, a good one there. Right. Frost and Fists is next. Yay! So it's a great video, my brother. It's been a sad thought to see this go. I've really been thinking hard about what questions to ask. Well, thank you. I'm, you know, you you guys all know my reasons for, for ending it now. I think it's, it's, it's kind of run its course, the whole Q&A thing. And there's only so much you can ask one person, right? But like I say, you could, there might be the odd special in the future, just one-offs, but it's going to be a series. I'm sad to see it go too. I, I mean, I enjoy the series. I, I enjoy it a lot and I've tried different things over the course of it, um, you know, in an effort to try and inject new life into it. But I think it's just, I think the whole Q&A thing has kind of run its course for now at least. Um, but then we have a whole new generation of uh, hobbyists coming in. So who knows the future who knows all right anyway on to your questions number one in over 200 plus episodes of pnq what are a few of your favorite questions in all of this time wow 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 um one of them would be what was my favorite tutorial to make that was my realm of battle board again note to myself put a link in the corner if you remember Darn, that means I've got to watch this video back. Um, yeah, it's definitely that was definitely um, definitely one of them. Oh, another another favourite question I can remember is, uh, I mean, I've had a few over the course of the years. Um, do I think there's life on Mars? That kind of thing. Uh, you yeah, know, that was a that was a good um, that was a I like questions like that. Number two. You're the captain of a Death Watch kill team. Pick five YouTube friends you want for your next mission. Ooh, what chapter are they? What is their role on your team and why? How are you, Captain Pete, equipped for this mission? Whoa. Well, of course, my number one choice is going to be my wolf brother, Mephos. Space wolves, of course, riding that wolf cavalry. Riding that wolf. <laughs> but you've got a wolf and you're riding him. Um, yeah. Who else? Who else? Wow. I'd have Idic Beer, 40k Necrons and more. Mm. Blood Angels, because I know he, like, he likes them. <laughs> yeah, he, he's a tactician. Because he's good at tactics. I mean, really good at tactics. Um... Spud from Chilling War Games, Chilling War Games, yeah, um, Chilling War Gamers, yeah, he, he, yeah what, kind of, what chapter, um, he's going to be a hard hitter, like a real melee guy, just steaming, he, he can back you up, uh, Mephos, ah, what chapter would I have him, hmm, that is tricky. That is well tricky. Um, Black Templar, I think. Yep. Fog of War is another YouTuber. Uh, although he doesn't do 40k, he, he, he does Flames of War. But I'd have him on my team as a sniper, an ultramarine sniper. You know, a specialist in you know, uh, long, the long shot. Uh, and Mr. Stephen Green from the last question, he could be my apothecary. 
Um, he could be an Iron Fist apothecary. Yeah. That's my five. Great question. Number three. If we close this series out in an 80s montage, which song from your Roadhouse Bound album would you play as the final scene as P&Q closes? Well, if you continue watching, you might just find out. <laughs> yeah. Keep up the great work, my brother. I'll see you when you're on the bench videos and any other videos you put out, my friend. Big loves. Thank you, Wolf Brother Mephos. Thank you so much. Your your love, friendship, and support means the world to me. It really does. May your dice roll successfully. Mini Warmut is next, aka Brian. Hey Pete, I watched a lot of your cool PNQ videos. Always like them. Pete, you have a really, really good channel and I enjoy watching your videos. Thank you, thank you. It means a great deal to me. That does, I mean, no, it really does. I enjoy the variety of miniature war games. I really hope you keep at it. Well, of that you can be certain. I will definitely be keeping at it. Um, okay, got that out of the way. My question for you, where do you go from here? Are you cutting back on your series of videos? Or will your P and Q be combined in another type of video series? Since I'm getting involved in Gates of Antares, what are your opinions of the game? Keep up the great work, Pete. Right. Let's pull my chair a bit closer and have a sip of tea. I need this to think. Um, right. I'm not cutting back on my video series. I'm just ad making adjustments as time goes on. Um, putting more concentration and effort into other videos. Will it? Will my P&Q be combined in another type of video series? Yeah, I was thinking of combining it with my On The Bench as we paint along. I can answer questions put to me. And um, yeah, I could do it that way. It would give me something to talk about during the course of, of, of the episode. I know they're longer videos, like hour long usually, but I was thinking of combining it with that. Gates of Antares. What are my thoughts on that game? Um, I love the miniatures. I love the lore. The whole setting. I think it's got great potential. And I, think I only had the, uh, the first edition. I don't know if there's any other editions out there now. I wasn't too keen on the mechanics of combat shooting uh, in so much as low numbers, well, not just shooting, is it? But in so much as low numbers are, are better for you, not high numbers. I understand that in some situations in games to roll low on like, I don't know, maybe a leadership check or a morale check can be a good thing. But it doesn't sit well with me having to roll low for combat. I just didn't like that about it. So you have a, I don't know, like a shooting uh, a skill of, um, you know, say five or six, say. So the higher your number and your skill, the lower you need to roll. You need to roll below that to make a success. And I just, I wasn't keen on that. I like rolling high. I like the higher numbers to mean more. That's just my own personal opinion. But like I say... The setting and the lore, the miniatures, fantastic. The artwork, it's all great. You know, if it wasn't for that and if they sort that out, I mean, you know, it could be a contender for a number two spot, you know, after 40K. I really do think that. It's getting warm in here already. I've got, I've got a load of lights on, but I'll try and get through without having to put my fan on because that could be annoying. Well, I might have to relent, but at the moment we're okay. William QB is next. He says, well, darn it, first, that outweigh. Darn it, no more, Q&A. Lol. I'd like to see some TNA bad joke. Don't know that one. Okay, for next next time question, after the lockdown and get out, how, how about you and Mr. Beer do a bat rep? Something about 8th edition, as say in vid. Taking night off for a bit. Yeah, I'm... Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, because I'm, I'm stepping back for, for maybe a year while I sort my finances out. 
and it, it might be a couple of years because you know it takes a while you know it takes a couple of years doesn't it for them to bring out a new rule set per se and i wouldn't want to then invest in a new rule set uh, only to have it changed pretty much instantly that happened to me in six bought bought the six and literally i swear as god is my witness i literally finished reading the sixth edition rule book maybe a week or two at the top later seventh edition comes out i'm like you've got to be kidding me anyway <laughs> me and mr beard back rep i don't think that would be a very good bat rep to watch because he would just destroy me with his uh, with his armies and his genius. His Necrons are a force to be reckoned with. Um, it's not to say something like that couldn't happen in the future, though. I'll happily go. You know, if I'm in an area, if I go somewhere, maybe for uh, like a mini vacation or something like that, I will always see if there's any YouTubers near said area and see if they want to hook up it wouldn't be too much of a problem to you know take an extra case and some you know pack my army in well and take it with me yeah, it could be done it could be done um right uh, yeah see other other it'd be good to see other U uk youtuber gamers yes uh that'd be fun to see how that post and we'll see please treat the furry kids for me they have actually had new treats, and they've had a few today. And I, I, I get them, well, my, my wife gets them uh, their own special pack of, um, like, ham or chicken or whatever it might be uh, every week just for them, and then they have a piece of it every day. You know, like the sandwich meats you get, whereas, uh, you know, we have our own, and they have their own, you know, and they've got their dentist sticks and, and loads of other biscuits and treats in their treat box, which is packed to the brim it's you can hardly lift it it's really really heavy now and uh yeah so they don't go without treats don't you worry about that okay idic beer 40k necrons and more necrons okay he says well, it says here three weeks ago this was sad times to see the king of q a ending the show no oh, but it is understandable Yes, I mean, you, you've got to have anywhere else. If you don't, uh, it's like anything, even business, you know, if you don't adapt, you'll just die, you know. And I don't want to be, I don't want to end up me get to an episode with no questions and just have to say, well, there's no questions this week. So, yeah, thanks. See you on the next one, you know. Uh, there's no point in that. But it is understandable, yes. I hope we do see some specials at some point. Maybe every Christmas, like Only Fools and Horses. Hee hee, ha ha. Might, might do, might do. So much changes so quickly, doesn't it? I mean, who knows? Definitely, definitely having a, a bit of a long hiatus, though. And a well-earned one, I think. I'm, I'm proud to have gotten this far with a QA. and a And as you know, I used to do it every week. And I'm pr I never missed an episode that was, you know, meant to go out. Never, not once. Not that. I'm really, really proud of that. Because I went through some, you know, tough times in, in real life as well at the time, you know, and still still managed to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that. Anyway, don't want to hear that. It says, so a last question. Ha, ha, ha. How do you think the Earth will end? And will humans still be here to see it? Do you think we will ever be able to travel... And inhabit another planet? How advanced will humans be in the far future? Will we have cybernetic implants? Or will the human general intelligence naturally evolve so that we can use more of our brain power? This must be to do with that humans thing you were talking about. And I still haven't had a chance to see it. And, and I will. I promise I will. Because I've been looking for new stuff to watch. Like, I mean, I've recently got into a new one. A new series called um, Deep Sea Salvage. But it's by the History Channel. And it's really, really cool. I love stuff like that. Anyway, let's take this one thing at a time. Do I? How do I think the Earth will end? I don't know. Probably just by going in too close to the sun or something. You know, when the sun blows up, that'll be the end of the Earth. Will humans still be here to see it? Possibly. 50-50. Do you think we will ever be able to travel and inhabit another planet? Yes. 
How advanced will humans be in the far distant future? Very advanced, I should think. Will we have cybernetic implants? Possibly. We're trying to do that now, aren't they, with different things? Or will the human general intelligence naturally evolve so that we can use more of our brain power? I think we'll be we will be connected to AI. I think that's what they want. Um, they want the human brain to be connected to AI. I think they want a merging of the two. Yeah, because I don't know how they'll do it, but I think they that is what they are aiming for. It's a great question. That's a thought-provoking question. Starkey's man cave is next. So some fun questions. If space is expanding, what's it expanding into? Ooh. That is... That is... Oh, I need a cup of tea. Oh, I need a sip of tea at least. Wow. Mm. I can't answer that. <laughs> But what a fantastic question. If you was a zombie, who would you love to eat? Really? <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't want to eat anybody. <laughs> if all brushes lead to war, which brush would you carry into battle? And would you name it? I would carry my regiment brush into battle. And I would call him Jonathan. And finally, what has been the most thought-provoking question of all 240 episodes? I think yours is the first one you gave me there. It's like, if space is expanding, what's it expanding into? This is going to be, in all seriousness, a topic I'm going to broach with my wife this evening. She's the best conversationalist I know. And yeah... Fantastic. That is the most thought-provoking question of all 240 episodes. Easily, that one. If space is expanding, what is it expanding into? If anyone else can answer that. Not that I'll be putting any responses in a, in a video to, to these, but I can read the responses. If anybody wants to answer that, put it in the comments. Right. Mr. Idic Beer, 40k, Necrons and more. Right. What are we on at the moment? We are on, ooh, we're on 22, nearly 23 minutes. Right. Now, Mr. Beer has done something for me. So he says, might as well go out with a bang. Feel free to pick and choose which ones you answer. He's given me a hundred questions. A hundred questions. I'm going to answer them all. I'll try and do it as rapidly as I can. Who is your, right? Because, you know. Who is, number one, who is your hero? My dad. Two, if you could live anywhere, where would it be? Florida. Three, what's your biggest fear? Being alone with no one in my life. Four, what is your favorite family vacation? That would be Florida. Five, what would you what would you change about yourself if you could? I would change, I would make it that I didn't have MS anymore and I could be healthy. That would be what I would change. Number six, what makes you really, what really makes you angry? That's people that, who don't understand or care that some people have hidden disabilities. What motivates you to work hard? My wife, that's number seven. Number eight, this is of his questions, by the way. What is your favorite thing about your career? Favorite thing about my career? Ha <laughs> ha. It's not so much a career at the moment, um, and that suits me down to the ground. I've had careers, believe me, but you know, with the job I work at, my favourite thing about it is I don't have to take work home with me. I go in, I clock in, I do my job, I clock out, I go home, and that's it. No responsibility. Brilliant. What is your biggest complaint about your job? Again. People who do not care or understand that some people have hidden disabilities. If anybody is watching from, you know, where I work now, yeah, it needs highlighting. It really does. Come on now. Number 10, what is your proudest accomplishment? <sighs> wow. Marrying my wife. 
um, having several works of poetry published representing England in uh, in the world in the two thousand World Karate Championships that were hosted in Plymouth for Sky News. Uh, uh, for um, being in a rock band, it got to make a, an album and did quite well. Yeah, that's enough, isn't it? I don't know what my proudest one out of all, out of, all of them is. Uh, probably my um, marrying my wife. Eleven, what is your child's proudest accomplishment? I don't know the answer to that. I did ask her. She said she'd give it some thought, but she's gone away. For, you know, stay with her boyfriend for a few days, so I, I don't know. Uh, Twelve, what is your favourite book to read? The Lord of the Rings. What makes you laugh the most? My wife. Fourteen, what was the last movie you went to? What did you think? It was the new Terminator one. What was it called? Dark Fate, I think. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I know the critics panned it, but I I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good film. Fifteen. What did you want to be when you were small? Well, nothing realistic, that's for sure. Do you remember the TV series Monkey? It was that like like about like the where there was a monkey god and a pig god and a fish god and they were like taking scriptures to India or something. You know, I wanted to be monkey. <laughs> you asked. Um, right, so where are we? Number 16. What does your child want to be when he, she grows up? Well, she is grown up. She's 20 now. She'll be 21 this year. She still wants to go into the RAF as a weapons technician. She's also applied to the army for the same position, weapons technician. Uh, but she is awaiting her, the to hear back from the RAF to see when, where she can take her fitness test because the gyms aren't doing it at the moment. But that's what she's waiting on. 17. If you could choose to do anything for a day, what would it be? Relax. 18. What is your favourite game or sport to watch and play? Hmm. Toss up between tennis and golf. I like them both with equal measure. 19. Would you rather ride a bike, ride a horse, or drive a car? Well, having done all three, my favourite is ride a horse. Absolutely amazing. Love riding. 20. What would you sing at karaoke night? Pretty much anything that falls within my vocal range. I've, I've sung all sorts. Uh, although I don't class myself as a, a lead singer per se, more of a, more of a backing singer, you, what you'd call it. But, um, you know, I'll give it a go at karaoke nights because, you know, you've all been to those, right? 21. What two radio stations do you listen to in the car the most easy? Classical FM and Pirate FM. 22. Which would you rather do? Wash dishes, mow the lawn, clean the bathroom, or vacuum the house? Mow the lawn, I think. Yeah. 23. If you could hire someone to help you, would it be with cleaning, cooking, or yard work? Cleaning. 24. If you could only eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Ooh. Uh, fish and rice. Oh, yeah. 25. Who is your favourite author? Well, Bex Gooding, of course, my wife. Um, second comes J.R.R. Tolkien, then Isaac Asimov, and then Terry Brooks. In that order, though. 26. Have you ever had a nickname? What is it? Yes. Legend. That was my nickname for many years, was Legend. It's actually uh, part of my personal email as well. Gooding legend. <laughs> right. Um, 27. Do you like or dislike surprises? Why or why not? Depends if it's a good surprise. I like it. If it's a bad surprise, I dislike it. Who wouldn't? 28. In the evening, would you rather play a game, visit a relative, or watch a movie, or read? Depends how I'm feeling at the time. 29. Would you rather vacation in Hawaii or Alaska and why? Hawaii? No, Alaska. I don't know, actually. I don't know. I'll have to 
toss a coin because I think I'd like both. 30. Would you rather win the lottery or work at the perfect job and why? Well, no, I don't want to work, so I'd rather win the lottery so that I didn't have to work. Yep, perfect. 31. Who would you want to be stranded with on a deserted island? Well, if there was someone I was stranded with, it wouldn't be deserted, would it now? 32. If money was no object, what would you do all day? I'd hobby. 33. If you could go back in time, what year would you travel to? Hmm. 1975, I was four years old. Start my school life again with the knowledge I have now, I think. 34. How would your friends describe you? Um, extreme, I think. And anything I do, if anything I do, I put my all into it, or I go, you know, head first, both feet, whatever you call it. Yeah, I'll go. Oh, yeah. For instance, if you say, oh, let's go fishing, and I want to go to Whole Hog, you know, hire a boat, get all the gear, you know, do it, you know, not just stand with a little line. No, I want to do the whole thing. Um, 35, what are your hobbies? Hmm. Well, I'll be obviously modelling and gaming, reading, writing, music, and karate. Though, from my perspective, it's more from more of a coaching angle now. Right. What is 36? What is the best gift you've ever been given? Life. What is the worst gift you've ever received? That's 37. Oh, uh, when I was at Royal Mail, I had a 10 year plaque, just like glass plaque thing. Crap. You know. Oh, and a crappy pen that didn't work. 10 years of service. I thought, well, there's a doorstop at least. But there you go. Um, aside, 38, aside from necessities, what one thing could you not go a day without? Some could argue that my wife is a necessity for me, but I'm going to say my wife. List two pet peeves. Being interrupted and people who talk too loudly. 40. Where do you see yourself in five years? Probably pretty much the same position I'm in now. 41. How many pairs of shoes do you own? About half a dozen. 42. If you were a superhero, what powers would you have? Be like Wolverine with super healing ability. 43. What would you do if you won the lottery? Uh, pay off the mortgage on the house. Uh, rent it out. Move to somewhere. A nice sort of big place near the sea. And get a villa as well in somewhere like Florida or something for, to be able to go to holiday with you know, occasionally. Yeah, that. 44. What form of public transportation do you prefer? Air, boat, train, bus, car, etc. Hmm. I'll say train. 46. If you could go back in time to change one thing, what would it be? Change one thing. What would it be? Hmm. Well, it's a little morbid, and I'm sorry to get a little bit morbid, but it's, it, it, it's true, I like to be honest. I'd go back in time to when a certain friend of mine was still alive. He, he committed suicide, unfortunately. I'd like to go back in time to before that happened, knowing that he was going to do that, and I would, I would go and I would stop him. I'd, I'd stick with him like glue. I'd make sure he didn't take his life. I, I don't know. Um, anyway, let's get back to uh, some tempo. Forty-seven. If you could share a meal with any four individuals, living or dead, who would they be? My mum, my dad, who's no longer with us. My wife. Yeah, my friend who passed away, because a lot to talk about. 48, how many pillows do you sleep with? Usually one, 
sometimes two. Two usually gives me a bad neck crick in the neck, so I usually stick with just one. 48, 49, sorry. What's the longest <coughs> you've gone without sleep and why? I suffered with insomnia years and years ago. I think mean, I went a couple of days without sleep and it was awful. I don't know why. I can't explain it. 50, what's the tallest building you've been to, uh, to the top in? I think it's Blackpool Tower. It's not that tall, is it? But it's like a miniature version of the Eiffel Tower. So not, not that tall. But I have been on some taller, I would say, roller coasters. I've been on the tallest one in the world. I forget where that was. One of the parks over here, but anyway. 51, would you rather trade intelligence for looks or looks for intelligence? Looks for intelligence. 52, how often do you buy clothes? Not very. 53, have you ever had a secret admirer? I don't know, it was a secret, if I even had one. 54, what's your favorite holiday? It was the Florida holiday. 55, what's the most daring thing you've ever done? Daring thing I've ever done. Tell my wife I loved her when I first met her. Um, or shortly after I first met her anyway. Uh, what was the last thing you recorded on TV? Don't know. We don't have a TV service coming in anymore. Um, see, that would have been years and years ago when I lived in a different place. Um, goodness knows. I would guess Ice Road Truckers because I used to watch it when it first came out. And then sometimes I had to. I was working nights at the time, so I believe it would have been something like that. 57, what was the last book you read? The last book I read was one of the gaming books. Forget which one, because I'm just pumping through the, the Flames of War rule book. 58, what's your favorite type of foreign food? Chinese, 59, are you a clean or messy person? Um, I'm clean, but disorganized. For 60, who would you want to, who would you want to play you in a movie of your life? Whoa. Uh, I don't know. 61. How long does it take you to get ready in the morning? Depends if I'm suffering with particularly that day with my MS. It could be anything from half an hour to two hours. Honestly. 62. What kitchen appliance do you use every day? Kettle. 63. What's your favourite fast food chain? KFC. 64. What's your favourite family recipe? Spaghetti bolognese. It's nice and easy as well. 65. Do you love or hate roller coasters? I absolutely love them, but I can't go on them anymore due to problems with my neck. So, But I absolutely love them. 66. What's your favourite family tradition? Um, watching A Christmas Carol on Christmas Eve. 67. What's your favourite childhood memory? I've got so many and I can't pick one. 68, what's your favourite movie? Hmm. Empire Strikes Back. 69, what, how old were you when you learned Santa wasn't real? How did you find out? What? Is your glass half full or half empty? Neither, it's just half a glass. 71, what's the craziest thing you've done in the name of love, baby? Um, I've walked miles and miles. Long story, won't go into it. 70, what, 72, what free items would you take with you on a deserted island? A boat, a flare gun, and a bottle of water. 73, what was your favourite subject in school English? 74, what's the most unusual thing you've ever eaten? Unusual thing. Um... It's not that unusual, but snails, I guess. It was all right, actually. 75, do you collect anything? <laughs> 76, is there anything you wished would come back into fashion? Good manners. 77, are you an introvert or an extrovert? I'd class myself as an introvert. 78, which of the five senses would you say is your strongest? I would say either taste or smell. I don't know which, it might be both equal. 79, have you ever had a surprise party that was an actual surprise? No. 80, are you related or distantly related to anyone famous? Yes. 
and I won't say who. 81. What do you do to keep fit? Not enough. So, 82. Does your family have a motto, spoken or unspoken? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And I'm sorry, how far are we up here? I'm sorry, it's 40 minutes down. I said this was going to be a long one, but yes, we have a family motto. It's a quote from the Bruce Lee movie, Enter the Dragon. It's when Williams goes in to confront, well, he goes in to, to speak to Mr. Hahn, who's, who's about to kill him, pretty much. Uh, and I remember the scene. So he's just fought in the tournament, and Mr. Hans called him in. He's about to kill him, um, but this is how the dialogue goes. So he goes, so Williams, well, yeah, Williams goes in and says, Mr. Hahn. Mr. Hahn tells him, he goes, You fought well today. Uh, I probably shouldn't do the accent, but your style is unorthodox. And then William says, But effective. And then Hahn nods and goes, it is the combat and not the art which you enjoy. And Williams goes, the winning. And then Han sort of nods and says, we are all ready to win, just as we are born, knowing only life. It is defeat you must learn to prepare for. And here comes our family motto. He goes, I don't waste my time with it. When it comes, I won't even notice. Han looks surprised. He goes, oh, how so? He says, I'll be too busy looking good. Now, we apply that motto, motto to everything that's kind of negative towards us. So if something you know, bad happens or something's getting to us, just think of that. I don't waste my time with it. When it comes, I won't even notice. It's such a cool philosophy to have. Anyway, sorry I went into that one a bit, but anyway. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Where are we? Where are we? 83. If you were the ruler of your own country, what would be the first law you would introduce? I don't know. I don't know anything about ruling countries. 84. What was your favourite teacher in school and why? Well, in primary school, my first school, it was uh, Miss Waters. She seemed to love me. I don't know why. Secondary school. My favourite teacher. Well, I had a couple, I suppose. My form tutor, Mr. Preston. He's dead now. He was an art t uh, tutor. And um, another one who I won't say because she's still alive, very much alive, and I'm in, you know, touch with. But, um, you know, taught me uh, media studies and uh, a bit of English as well. So, yes, anyway, those two. Um... 85. What three things do you think of the most each day? Three things do I think of the most each day? Hmm. Well, at the moment, how crazy the world is. Uh, two more. How much I love my family. And... Oh, ow, that hurts. Usually, yeah, I'd say those three things. 86. If you had a warning label, what would yours say? Warning has no filter, speaks his mind. 87. What song would you say best sums you up? I've no idea. 88. What celebrity would you like to meet at Starbucks for a cup of coffee? No idea. I don't like many celebrities, to be honest. Um... Mm. Although there is one I quite like, um, Keanu Reeves. He's a good. He seems like a good human being. I'd like to meet him. Who was your first crush? Um, one of the presenters of a children's program called Play School. I'll say no more. Ninety. Are we on 90 now? Yes, we are on 90. Question 90 of Idix 100. What's the most interesting thing you can see out of your office or kitchen window? Well, the way I've got my desk set up now, I, it's the door. I open the door and I see a, an olive tree that was planted um, right over where my dog Taz, my beloved Taz, was buried. So that's interesting to me. So I think he's the tree now. 91, on a scale of 1 to 10, how funny would you say you are? 
Well, depends on my frame of mind and how funny I... On a good day, I can be a 10, I think. 92, where do you see yourself in 10 years? I have no idea. 93, what was your first job? Panel beater. That's someone that knocks out the dents in your car and then gets it ready for the spray, for the spray paint, so the painters to, you know, put their coat of paint over the, what was damaged. 94, if you could join any past or current music group, which would you want to join? I am Maiden, baby. 95, how many languages do you speak? Let me see. English, Cornish, Welsh. No, I'm kidding. Um, English, just one. 96, what is your favourite family holiday tradition? Don't have many holidays, um, to be honest. Don't, not, I haven't had enough. We haven't had enough. We've only had two, really. So we haven't had enough family holidays to have a tradition as such. I mean, that's a broad holiday. We've had holidays here, I suppose. Can't think of any traditions, though. 97. Who's the most intelligent person you know? My wife. 98. If you had to describe yourself as an animal, which one would it be? A lion. Because I'm quite lazy, but deadly if provoked. 99. What is one thing you will never do again? I will never get married again. Because I, I'm with the one I love, so I wouldn't do it again. 100. Who knows you the best? My wife. There we go. That's 100 questions from Idic Beer. Thank you, Nick. I'll answer them all. Next. Who took my die says, better get some questions in then. Questions. What is your view on where Warhammer 40k is going to go over the next few years? How do you think 3D printing is going to evolve in regards to the hobby? What fantasy sci-fi show or book series would you like to see turned into tabletop war game? Cheers on such a long and illustrious series, my friend. Thank you. Where do I see the Warhammer 40k going? I, was just, I think it's just going to get bigger and better and... I think they're going to introduce more and new and old characters and just have really awesome sculpts for them and rules and I I'd like yeah 40k yeah just more how do I think 3d printing is going to evolve in regards to I think it will start with a 3d printer when it gets to a really good standard being in every hobby store and then you can just buy your miniatures through that because not everybody will have a 3D printer. I mean, a lot of people will have them by then, but not until like pretty much everybody's got one. Then it'll be a case of you just buy your code and print it yourself sort of thing. That's how I think it will. But it'll start off in the shop, I think. You Or you can put your order in and then they'll print it to order, you know, print per order pretty much like a lot of books are now print per order so I'll, I'll go onto the website or, or somewhere that uh some store i think right i want to get i don't know gilliman or something like that say uh it's code so and so put that in and either the store will print it up um either they'll send me the code i can print it up myself or they'll print it up and send it to me or i can go and collect it or what have you right next all right, the last one, actually, so you'll be glad to hear. Jam Jar 34, how are you and Mrs. Mini Wars? And we are good. Thank you for asking. What plans have you got for your hobby up until the end of the year? I'm just going to keep on trucking, my friend. Keep on trucking, see where it goes. No, I'm not planning as such. I mean, I am for my next adventure, which is, you know, Lord of the Rings. But other than that, yeah, I'm just going to see how it goes. Favourite project this year? Probably my zombie side. The sci-fi one. No, probably that. I, yeah, that's tricky. I'm enjoying the, the Lord of the Rings project I'm on now. Favourite model you've painted this year so far? Well, I'm quite... I'm really liking my Tom Bombadil at the moment. Um, there. If you can see him, he's coming on nicely anyway. I'm really enjoying him. And another one I'm enjoying is Bjorn. Uh, 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 he's a big 
big guy compare him to Tom Bombadil yeah <laughs> anyway yeah favorite terrain piece this year I've yet to do that um plan on making a hobbit hill for my hobbit my hobbit hole front to go on to so I've got to make that so I haven't done it yet it is the last one, so got to make an added effort with the question. Sending hobby love to you and Mrs. Mini Wars, and thank you, Jam Jar. Thank you so much. And that, so Jam Jar 34 closes out my P and Q and the final episode. I wanted to know what song I put for the montage. I don't know about a montage, but uh, I don't know. My favourite song. I suppose love never dies and I love this instrumental bit in the middle and so thank you friends thank you for your support it's meant the world to me the absolute world I cannot thank you enough I've had an amazing what five years of Pinky I, I enjoyed every single moment of it Every question one day it'll be I may even go through just to see how many questions I answered on, on that series. It'd be hey I could probably do a competition, couldn't I? Got me thinking. Anyway, thank you so much my friends and for your support and love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will see you out there. This has been Pete. Mini Rosa, Mini Rosa on P and Q. And remember, guys, all brushes lead to war. So I'll see you around. Bye for now. Bye, my friends. <laughs>